church a pastor? Or the staff? Is the church the music? The tradition? Or the ministries? These are all good things, but they are not the church. Take them away, and the church is still here. Why? Because you are still here. The church is you. The church is you with a purpose. The church is you on a mission. The church is you with a plan, a simple plan to plug into God at a weekend service, to charge up in a small group community, to live out using your gifts and passions, and to pass on your faith to those who do not know Christ. When you and I live like this, all the things we used to do in church become things we do as the church. God desires it. The world needs it. And we are called to be it. What is the church? The church is you. Good morning, everyone. Well, as you can see, we're definitely not in the sanctuary. Normally, we'd, we would be usually six feet apart, but Mom and Jay said it was okay since we lived together. Did you hear? The Parkers are going to sing. Yeah, I did, but doesn't Mr. Merrick usually do that? Normally, yes, but he just had a knee replacement, and it's going to take a lot of feeling, so prayer would be much needed. Hopefully, we'll have him back next week. Anyways, how's the weather, Josh? Ah, well, you see, with all this coronavirus stuff, who goes outside anyways? We all stay inside. <laughs> Speaking of weather, you know why Jordan couldn't trust the ocean? It's all something fishy. With all this growing and everything, how are the schools? I heard that the school's closure is extended to April 24th. Yeah, what about that new Zoom class thing? Oh, Zoom. That's where everybody FaceTimes and makes sure everybody gets their work done on time and efficiently. That's awesome, and people see each other without spreading the corona. Yeah, and Maddie, do you know how to wash your hands? Um, so <laughs> uh, well, it's a lot more complicated than that. You always gotta make sure you get in the middle of your fingertips and make sure you go for at least 30 seconds. Speaking of taking care of important things, Mama J has made a time video for us. Let's check that out. wonderful day that you provided for us today, Lord. And Lord, just please help the sermon, Lord, help it to touch people. Thank you for each and everything you say and do for us, Lord. Please help forgive us of all of our sins, Lord, and thank you for everything you say and do. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this amazing day that you've given us, Lord. Lord, we love you so much. Jesus, please forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. Forgive us where we failed you. Forgive us where we messed up. Jesus, we pray for all the sick right now that you just place your hand of protection over them and over all of us, Lord. Jesus, we just pray for everyone at the church, Lord, and we just pray that our congregation will stay together through this rough time. Lord. Jesus, thank you for everything, Lord. Jesus, you're amazing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. 
He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will bring thou the goodness of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. We welcome you here to the uh, virtual service. Uh, we're glad to see everybody here. Uh, make sure to make a comment online or a thumbs up, something like that. We know that you're watching, and plus it gives uh, a little bit of extra hope and strength to everyone else who is uh, in the congregation and watching. So also we want to say a word to all of our guests uh, that may be here watching online. You may not be a part of the Fleming family, but uh, in Christ we are one family, and we're glad to have you. And thankful that uh, that you took the time to be here in the service today. Brother Greg, we're uh, wishing you a speedy recovery through everything. Uh, he's continuing to recover from the knee, but also got some other little things going on. We just want to continue to lift he and Miss D up in prayer. We are hoping to have the band back in to do a set uh, for next week. But we're kind of having to take it a week at a time right now and see how things are going. So to everybody... Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for checking us out. Please feel free to share, uh, to, to send other people to the website so that they know about this and they can go on and worship alongside of us. And uh, don't forget, you can still worship through your tithes and offerings, um, as uh, Jennifer put up on the video earlier. Um, make sure that you see that because, again, we still uh, are going to be able to worship through that, and we thank God for that opportunity. As I was... Uh, Learning early on as a dad in the house, I found out really quick that the dad set so much of the tone for the house. Uh, I found out when I was really grumpy that I would come in and the whole house, it seemed like over time, would get grumpy. Or if I was in a really good mood, it would help lift the spirits or the atmosphere of the house. So you play a major part as a dad in your household. So I challenge you dads to take that very seriously uh, right now. But the same thing is true with a pastor in a sheepfold. Uh, a, a, a sheepfold is only as successful as their shepherd. Uh, today's message, we're going to talk about the good shepherd leading us. One of my favorite passages of scripture and probably my very favorite uh, illustration of how the Lord Jesus explains himself. So we're going to be in John chapter 10. I want to invite you. Uh, take your Bible out. Uh, if, you, if you have it right there, take your Bible out. And read alongside of us and just keep it open here. Uh, I'll be sharing some other verses with you for those of you who take notes. But I want you to see this for yourself and see how the Lord Jesus uh, describes his mission and, and what he's come to do. We uh, had a neat experience a couple weeks ago. We went into Kroger and I carried Chloe and Madeline uh, with me to help do some, uh, some grocery shopping. Now... Let me explain something. You don't just run to the grocery store for like a two-minute thing, run in, run out at the Parker house. I mean, there's six of us, and we always have other people alongside, so we have, uh, we have quite a bit of groceries to get. Um, but even, So anyway, that was the case this particular day. We had two carts, one behind and one in front. And a lady was asking me about stuff that was going on in the world. She said, what do you think about all of these different things going on? And uh, so it's interesting you ask, I'm, I'm a pastor, I've been studying this stuff for years and seeing how things are going and, and watching to see what's taking place. And it gave me a neat opportunity to begin to tell her about how Christ was, he remains the same, that he has everything taken care of, that uh, you're going to find that he's in control of everything. And I said, he's also trying to teach us some things right now that we really need to get. And I, and I was trying to give a sense of peace, but also a sense of a call uh, from this, from God, 
to be able to to change what we are and how we think and how we act and react and how we treat treat the Lord himself. Well, anyway, about the time that I'm sitting there and talking to this and, you know, kind of getting to a point where I'm coming to a, an end of it and fixing to go on, we're walking off and I'm in front uh, pushing a cart and all of, a su- all of a sudden the back left ankle is hit incredibly hard by another shopping cart, which was being pushed by my eldest daughter, Chloe. She ran into it. It begins to bleed in front of everybody and everything else, and it's a total wash. Now, let me tell you what happens here. You would say, oh, my gosh, how could you tell on your daughter for this? Well, I'm going to tell you something that, that was neat that happened out of it. In trying to look for the silver lining in the, in the cloud there, in this opportunity to witness, if you have a false faith, it was going to be really easy for that faith to crumble during that time and to say something I shouldn't have said, do something I shouldn't have done, or, or just really botch the whole thing. It would have lost the witness. But instead, God used that, and thank God for this. He allowed me to keep that stiff upper lip. I didn't do anything but just roll my eyes and kind of, oh, God, help me on this. But I, but I never skipped a beat. God held me up through it and allowed the witness to be able to be maintained during that time. The same thing is going to happen for you right now during this outbreak, during whatever's going on in your life. And by the way, this is going to pass. There's a time, there's a set time that this is going to end. We'll we'll carry on with what is going to be life as we as we will come to know it. But you're still going to have things that are going to come up. You're still going to get hit in the ankle with shopping carts. You're still going to have problems at work. You're still going to have schoolwork that you're just not ready for that test. Whatever it is, whatever circumstance that you're in, sometimes home life is going to be tough. So what is it that we count on during that time to keep us stable and to keep us focused and to maintain our witness? And I would argue this, that it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our great shepherd. John chapter 10, we begin reading in verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling. And careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're praying today as we Listen to your word. We believe it's inspired and it's infallible. We believe that it'll stand the test of time, it has, and that your word is absolute purity and truth. Today we ask to hear a word from you. Cleanse our hearts, forgive us where we failed you. Thank you for this time where we're able to draw close to you and hear from you. This is an act of worship, to become hearers of your word and doers of your word. So speak to our hearts today, Lord Jesus, we pray. We need you, and we need a word from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. To give a little bit of a background to help the intensity to kind of build to this passage, a lot of times you hear um, this spoken about in conjunction with the 23rd Psalm, or or you may hear it uh, explaining Jesus, but you may not know the intensity of the background behind this at the build-up. In chapter 8, it's kind of a running tab. Jesus, in chapter 8, forgives a woman that's caught in adultery, and it leads to a showdown with the scribes and the Pharisees, and the argument arises that they claim that they're Abraham's seed, and Jesus is explaining that he's come from God. He was greater than Abraham, and they began trying to kill him at this point. What we see next is in chapter 9, Jesus heals a blind man. And he heals him not only spiritually, but physically as well. And he uses this as an illustration to confront those who were looking on, the Pharisees 
and the scribes. And this argument comes that they are they claim to be disciples of Moses. And Christ begins to explain that if you were, you would be following what I'm telling you. Uh, they would continue uh, not just in their state of being blind, but they would open their eyes to see truth. Jesus Christ is truth. They would not, uh, the Pharisees and scribes uh, rejected this, and so he likened them unto the blind man who could not see, and he tells them they need to open their eyes so they can see. And so we, there's this constant struggle and showdown that's taking place here. And in chapter 10, we're going to see the Lord Jesus give some of the most rich and powerful explanations in regards to not only his divinity, but his mission, his relationship to the Father, his humanity. Uh, and this is some of the most rich and powerful, again, words from the Lord explaining his, himself. Give me the commentary, a running commentary on himself that perhaps we have recorded for us in scripture. It really should not surprise us that the Lord chose to reveal himself as a shepherd. Some other things scripturally. Abel, the first martyr, he was a shepherd. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob or Israel uh, was, a shape, uh, was a shepherd. So the patriarchs, uh, the fountainheads of our faith, uh, had to do with shepherding. Moses was a shepherd for 40 years for uh, Jethro, his father-in-law. David served his father Jesse in this capacity that prepared him for the showdown with Goliath, if you remember. God revealed himself as Israel's shepherd in Genesis uh, 49, 24. That was always God's intent. The father's intent was to shepherd his people, to be a shepherd to his people. The Messiah taught in John chapter 10, which is where we are today, that he is the good shepherd. He reveals himself as the prophecy, uh, the fulfillment of the prophecy given back in Isaiah, which we're going to touch on in a minute. So some things I want to talk to you about with this shepherd that you can depend on, that you can expect, that you can uh, hold out for all of eternity and hold on to, and that you can know and place in your heart to pull you through, whether it's a great time, whether it's a terrible time, whether you're just hanging in there, whether it's the unknown. These are the things that you can build on and hold on to. The first thing is we have a reliable shepherd. We have a reliable shepherd. Shepherd, look in verse 11 of our text. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. Now he's explaining here ownership of the sheep versus a hired hand. That word hireling there, it, it's, it's close to almost being kind of a, a negative terminology because it's somebody that they have nothing to do with the sheep other than they are a hired hand. So when any kind of adversity would have come their way, they really had no stock in the sheep other than they were going to get paid for this. So if something bad were to happen, let's say it was a wolf, let's say it was a bear, let's say it was a lion, all of which were in, in that uh, area and that shepherds had to deal with. Let's also say the uh, falling off of a cliff or into uh, something, some kind of swift water or something like sh like that. Sheep are normally scared of running water, so they don't go too close to that. But if some hazard were to happen in the environment, the shepherd would be responsible to rescue that sheep, or if it were in some type of apparel from uh, a predator. But also there were thieves that would break in and actually steal the sheep. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But they would actually uh, come in a, in a group a lot of times and steal some of the sheep. And even if the shepherd was there by himself, he was to risk his life in order to keep the thieves from scattering the flock. And what happened was they either would stand up and fight for their life and the life of the sheep, or they would die giving their life for the sheep. Here's what the Lord Jesus is saying here. He is reliable in this that he stands and fights for his people, even to the point of laying down his life, if necessary, and it was, so that we could live. Mm -hmm. Commentators Kyle and Delick said this, He who has Yahweh, the possessor of all things, himself has all things, he lacks nothing. God is our all-sufficiency. There is no lack in us. So we can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. God 
is our all sufficiency. He is our reliable shepherd. Isaiah 30, 21, in explaining this concept of him giving uh, guidance to us and being reliable, it says in Isaiah 30, 21, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, when you turn to the left. In other words, it's God's voice that tells us where we're supposed to go. And Proverbs talks about that. The man makes a plan, but the Lord is the one that directeth the steps. John 16, 13, Jesus spoke about when he was going to go away that the spirit of truth was going to come and he will guide you into all truth. We don't know what to listen to half the time. You have a very biased media. You have a very uh, a, a, a media that tries to get their ideologies right. You have some papers that are worth reading, some that are not, same with magazines, blogs, anything else. It is hard to know what to hear and what to listen to, what to put stock in. But here's what I can tell you this with all assurance. I may not know every bit of reporting, and I may not understand every bit uh, that comes out of Washington or comes out of out of New York or California or whatever's happening, not even here in Georgia. But what I can tell you is this, what does come through that is 100% truth, unadulterated, is God and his word. We have this to hold on to, to guide us to the right or to the left. Hang on to God's word. This is a great time right now for people to familiarize yourself with prophecy, to familiarize yourself with Jesus and who he is. This is a great time of uncertainty, but we have a great and reliable shepherd that is consistent. A second thing is we have a responsible shepherd. In verse 14, it says this, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. There is the concept of this, that sometimes when the shepherds would come into a, a town or close to a town, they would have a huge sheepfold and it would have a fence around, it would have one door, and that shepherd would uh, stand there at the door. He even acted as the door. So when the Lord Jesus said, I am the door, um, this is what he was talking about. But the concept was before they would go in, like at evening time, right before night, the shepherd would be responsible to get them one by one and to check them for any uh, any pestilence, uh, pestilences or any, uh, did any briars cut them that day? Did they cut their foot on a rock or something? Did they have any injuries? Did they have any problems? Uh, was everything okay with the sheep? And he had to do this on an individual basis before they would enter in. And as they would go into this sheepfold, they would stay there through the night. Somebody had to keep watch there to make sure the thieves didn't break in and steal. So again, there was a danger even at night. The next morning, he would call them out by name because multiple sheepfolds would probably use this pen. And he would call, he would be responsible with his particular call. He would usually a lot of times name each of the sheep. He would have a particular way that he called them out. And the sheep knew how to listen to the shepherd. They knew his voice. They knew the way he called. They knew their name. They knew to respond when he called a certain way. And I want to ask you this. Have you heard the Lord call your name? Have you heard from him? One of the most obvious ways and best ways to hear from him is to be in his word. This is where we get his truths in our lives. Some of the time people are confused between what is the Lord's voice or what is the voice of the world or Satan or, or whatever else. Understand this. The closer you walk with the good shepherd, the more you're going to know his voice. We have a responsible shepherd in this. That he will get to know us. He already does know us. He created us. And we can get to know him by studying his word, by talking with him. This is where prayer is so important. Being in your Bible daily is so important. In Psalm 119.50, it says this, This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. And that word quicken, it means to bring to life. In other words, God, your word has brought me to life. It has given me comfort when I was afflicted, when I was struggling. Your word was my comfort, and it gave me life. 
the spirit is first and the body and the mind, everything else is going to follow. If you're spiritually sick, the mental part, the emotional part, the physical part is all going to follow. And it's so important that we nourish ourselves properly spiritually. Because if we don't, when a time like this comes, we're going to be shaken and we're going to lose our faith. We're going to drop our faith. We're going to fall away from our faith. And it's so critically important to stand strong, whether you're getting hit in the ankle by a shopping cart or whether you're on top of the world. It's important to nourish yourself spiritually. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said this, There is no if, but, or I hope. The Lord is my shepherd. We must cultivate the spirit of assured dependence on our Heavenly Father. The sweetest word is that monosyllable, my. He does not say the Lord is the shepherd of the world at large and leads the multitude as his flock, but the Lord is my shepherd. If he is a shepherd to no one else, he is a shepherd to me. He cares for me, watches over me, and preserves me. The words are in the present tense. And he's correct in saying that. They are in the present tense. That means that works for us March 2020. It means it's going to work for us tomorrow if the Lord so gives us tomorrow. It means it works yesterday and it always will. The Lord is my shepherd. And you can claim that if you've placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't, you cannot claim that. You may be a sheep or you may be in the sheepfold, but you can't claim his as your shepherd. Today, place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him. He said this. Jesus said that he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Place your faith in him today and allow him to be your great shepherd. A third thing is we have a relational shepherd. I love this one. This was my favorite part of this entire message. Look at verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Okay, getting back to that sheepfold uh, commentary that I was giving you. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. That is an interesting word there. It doesn't mean I just know about them. It doesn't even mean that I talk with them. It's the concept of I know them on an intimate basis. Now, I don't want you to carry this somewhere you shouldn't, but I, this is the same kind of an idea when the Bible would talk about Joseph knew not Mary until the Messiah was born. It's just talking about an, an, an intimacy that goes deeper than just knowing about someone or knowing them or, or, or about them. This is talking about knowing them, the inside, the out, knowing who they are knowing how they think, knowing how they act, how they react. We have a shepherd who knows us. He doesn't just know us from the standpoint that, yes, he created us, he breathed life into us, but that he actually took care of our shortcomings on the cross. That he knew where we would fall short even before we did. You see, the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. God knew this was going to happen. And he knew we were going to need him. Did the coronavirus some way or another catch God off guard? No. Mm -hmm. Neither did any of the other plagues or pestilences that have been in the world throughout history. I would mention this. If nothing has caught God by surprise, then doesn't that mean that he has a plan for his people mm -hmm. through all things? I think of the great World War II generation. They, they, they probably never could have figured what was going to happen happened. So many people have prophesied or thought that this is going to be the end. This is going to be the war to end all wars. Uh, as a matter of fact, today give a special shout out. Uh, Papa Grover, uh, one of the last of that generation, is, is watching today. We love you, Papa, and uh, praying for you. We're proud of you. And I uh, just want to tell you what a great man that you've been in my life and all of our lives. Uh, so thank you for that. This great generation could have never figured what they would have to deal with. But God had a plan. And God protected that plan. 
The same thing has been true throughout different plagues that have gone on, sicknesses, and we find ourselves in 2020 wondering, how are we going to survive the economy? How are we going to survive a coronavirus? How are we going to survive businesses? How are we going to survive as a church? Listen, I've got questions too, but the one thing I can answer for you is perhaps the most important part, that God has got this. He's got every bit of this. Nothing has caught him by surprise. It never has. It never will. And his people will be triumphant because he is victorious. We are going to win because our shepherd wins. I want to throw this out there in verse 15. I don't have a lot of time to go into it. But as the Father knoweth me, even so I know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, to the Pharisees, this would have been absolutely blasphemous because this was saying that, hey, I know God on a much more uh, intimate level than any of you do. And these were religious people of the day. So let me throw this out there to you. As Jesus is talking to the scribes and Pharisees, they were the most religious people at that time by far. They did the stuff they were supposed to do, but it was empty. You can be religious all you want to. You can check your things off the list. You can do all the things you're supposed to that will never substitute for being in a relationship with God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Messiah. In other words, you can do as much holy work, charitable work, benevolent work, neighborly work as you want to. It will never earn you a spot in God's kingdom or his favor. So how do we obtain that? How do we? The truth of it is you can't. The good news of the gospel is this, that it's already offered to you, and it's offered in one way and one way only. Jesus said, I'm the door. If anybody's going to go in and out and find pastor, he's going to do it through me. That's the Lord Jesus' words. And so today, if you're going to find that peace that you're looking for, if you're going to find that salvation, if you're going to find that eternal security that you're longing for, if you're looking for a relationship, you're lonely and you say, I'm looking for a relationship that won't end, somebody that will not let me down. It's found in none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the good shepherd. Isaiah 40 had prophesied about him um, at least 600 years before his earthly ministry. It said this in Isaiah 40 verse 10. Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand and his arm shall rule him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. By the way, never forget this. For those of you who are concerned about churches and things, you need to be. We need to continue to worship. We need to continue to pray. We need to continue in our Bible study. We need to continue in our tithes and our offerings. We need to continue on in our faithful uh, sharing the gospel with our neighbors, those around us. But the Lord has a special love for his church. No, not a building. No, not a denomination. No, not some ideology that man has come up with. You are his church. We are. Are his church. The word is the ecclesia, the called out ones. That's the church. In 1 Peter chapter 5, he says this, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, in other words, don't not for filthy gain, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. In other words, you better watch how you take care of the church for those of you who are in leadership positions or service positions in the church. And we're promised in 1 Peter 5, 4 that when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. There's one other point that I'd like to make about this, and I don't have, again, a whole lot of time, but we have a returning shepherd. In verse 16, it says this, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. There should be unity in the body of Christ, regardless of denominational affiliation, viewpoints on certain scriptures, things like that. We are one in Christ. 
This is time for the church to quit uh, the uh, territorial attitude that we sometimes have. This is a time for unity, for cooperation. This is a time for focus, not on who we have on our sign or what we have on our sign, but who that we're serving, who we're on mission for, who has called us, who has sent us. We have a returning shepherd. We don't know when this return is going to be, but we can know this for full assurance that it's closer now than it's ever been. And if you watched in any of the world news that's taking place, far more pestilence, far more uh, famine and other things that are taking place now than ever before. His return could be very close. I'm not going to tell you it could be tomorrow and not know. I don't know what the day or the hour is going to be, but I know this, it could be at any time. And I know this, that we better be prepared. We better be ready. So many people, when they heard about the coronavirus, ran out and, and grabbed toilet paper. i got to be honest with you. I'm more concerned about getting food than toilet paper. I mean, God made leaves all the time, right? Worst comes to worst. Not trying to give you too much, but <laughs> the truth of it is toilet paper is not necessarily the highest priority on the list. Important, but not the most important. In other words, sometimes we grasp after things that are not crucial. What is absolutely critical is your relationship with the Messiah. He's returning. How do you get out of this that there's going to be one fold and one shepherd? How do you get that he's going to return? Because that's when we'll become one. We're one now. But we don't always act like it. We let man-made stuff stand in the way which really is either religious or sin at worst. But the truth of it is, one day all those things will go away. The more we remember that we have one shepherd, the more we unify. The more that we remember we have one calling, the more we unify. The more that we remember we have one kingdom, the more we unify. Whether it be in disastrous situations or whether it be in the best uh the best of the best of times. What's important to remember is that Christ said he would come back for us. He said this in John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas, which we sometimes refer to as Doubting Thomas, said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said something that's so incredibly important for today. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Who is the great shepherd? It's none other than Yeshua HaMessiah, our Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we get to a relationship with God the Father? We have to be forgiven because we've broken his holy law. We are guilty. You may say, I'm a good guy, I'm a good, good girl, I've done good things. Listen, it, it's not about your good outweighing your bad. That's man-made stuff. It's about the fact that we mess things up and somebody had to clean us up. And that's where Jesus comes in. One of the most beautiful illustrations that I ever heard about shepherding, you've probably heard this by now, it's actually something very well known in New Zealand, maybe not quite so much known here. But when this is a huge industry, uh, you have to do what you have to do in order to take care of the sheep. And a lot of times there are thousands of baby lambs that are born uh, during one particular part of the year or whatever. And a lot of times some lambs die at birth and sometimes some of the mother lambs will die giving birth. And in an attempt to save the orphan lambs, the shepherds will try to match the baby lambs with those, uh, the orphan baby lambs with those who have lost, uh, those mothers who have lost their little ones. But it's not as easy as it sounds. You see, the mother won't always accept that baby. So how did the shepherds get the mother to accept the orphan lamb and raise it as her own and to feed it, nourish it, guide it? The process is as old as shepherding itself. 
the mother's own lamb, which has died, is skinned. And the skin of the mother's lamb is placed over the orphan lamb. And it's draped over that living lamb so that the mother would smell her own lamb. And she would then take it in as her own. She would smell that skin and she would accept that orphan lamb as her own. The shepherding process is the exact same with our Heavenly Father. Once the blood of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, has been placed over our lives, He accepts us in as His own. We have been justified freely. We have been adopted in. We have been pronounced eternally children of the Most High God. This is where I ask you today, have you ever placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and asked for his blood to atone, to cover your transgressions, your sins? Blessed is the man whose sins cover, whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered, Psalm 32. Let me ask you this. Are you blessed with the security of knowing that you belong in the sheepfold of the Good Shepherd? If not, today is a wonderful day Today is an opportunity for you to receive that gift. It doesn't cost you. It costs the Lord Jesus everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you, place your faith in him. Believe in his death, his burial, his resurrection. Which denomination, which man-made stuff, which documentary to watch, which you're going to have lots of questions, and that's cool. You can... Tap into our website. You can even ask those questions. We'd be glad to help you with that. But what is monumental, what is most important, is that first step of faith, which is this. Admitting to God that you have sinned and you stand in need of somebody to clean up your mess up. Jesus stands ready to do that. When he died and he shed his blood, that would cover our sins if we had. When he rose again, that gave victory over death, hell, and the grave. Believe in this today and be saved. Tell him that you believe. Prayer is talking just like I'm communicating with you now. It's talking with the Lord. He hears our prayers. Perhaps you need to look at that relationship with him and you need to go stop a worry, stop a dread, stop living in a fear. And you need to say, I need to live in courage and I need to live sharing this good news with people. Would you go back and make that commitment that you're going to share, not just a hand to your neighbor, not just a smile. Those things are important. We should be doing those things. But we need to take it to the next step and share the good news that there is hope found in the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have a prayer request or something that's bugging you and you, you just need some peace. What a great time to go to the Lord in prayer. Isaiah 65, 24 says this, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The Lord hears our prayers. You can be sure of that. Today, would you place your faith in him? I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And then I'm going to pray a blessing over you. Heavenly Father, today we are grateful that you've given us another day to worship you in spirit and in truth. Today I pray that we've done that. And I pray that you would help us. God, we pray for healing, for cures, for all these different ailments that are taking place, pestilences, sicknesses, famines. But Heavenly Father, I also want to pray with that, that what you're trying to teach us through this that we would get it. Help us to hear your voice, Lord. Help us not only to hear, but to be obedient. Thank you for being our good shepherd. Thank you for offering salvation to us. Thank you that you took our place. That, Lord Jesus, your blood has covered our sins, our mistakes, our failures. Thank you, Lord God, that you've adopted us in as your own. Thank you that you are the good shepherd. In Jesus' most holy and precious name we pray.
As we draw to a close, let me say this. Uh, we thank you for all the prayers. The Parker House is definitely getting better uh, by leaps and bounds. As you can tell, I've got more, got more breath, got more uh, energy and things like that. I can't wait to see everybody. For those of you who are in the area, uh, we'd love to see you. We'll continue to keep you posted on the uh, website and on the Facebook, so make sure that you go on there and look for the updates. We are hoping and praying that next week the band uh, will be ready to, uh, to lead in worship again. And uh, again, it's, it's kind of a week at a time right now, but we're hoping that that's going to be the case. Another thing that we have that we're working on is um, a, a dialogue that's going to take place, and uh, we're hoping to have some special guests that may come in for that. Uh, but also, it's, it's a thing for us to film where we can talk over some biblical issues, and uh, we would love, to, love for you to tune into that. It's on the horizon. It's uh, maybe two weeks out, one to two weeks out. Um, and we'll start playing that, but be able to watch out for that. Don't forget, again, you can still offer your tithes and offerings online. Uh, it's a great time to do that. And in terms of, of any other announcements or any other things going on, as we have information and as we know, uh, we're going to make sure and post that online so that you're able to, uh, to see that and to be a part. You don't have to miss out on anything. And uh, we just, with that, say we love you. In Jesus' name, we're glad that you're here with us today and hope that this has spoken to your heart. And so uh, remember, as the psalmist said to the Lord in Psalm 73, 24, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. May God bless you as you follow the counsel of the good shepherd. The rest of everyone else is something more can go amazing more. Oh, everything with with the virus going around me help that to just pass and just be forgotten about more. So that everything else can just return back to how everything was, Lord, and more please remember all my support. Personal and I'm great. Amen.